Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Conversations with Independent Filmmakers. I know it's been a minute since I last dropped an episode of this, but we have a special guest. His name is Kevin Ben Cosman. He's an actor, screenwriter, director, producer, and podcaster. And 2023, he's been on a mission. So, Kevin, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Thank you for inviting me. For sure, for sure, man. Um, the movie um, that you're directing, One Life to Life, explain to us what it's all about. Well, One Life to Live is a movie that I co-directed. It's out on Amazon Prime and it's out on Tubi right now. Um, that movie is a coming of age story about this guy from Harlem who goes through his trials and tribulations um, and is kind of at the beginning of a war, like a street war. Um, and throughout the movie, you know, you see relationships, two different dynamics of relationships, uh, like romantic relationships. Um, also, you see how the streets maneuver. Um, it's borderline a thriller, you know? Like borderline a street thriller. Um, I mean, the way I got into it was through uh, this company, Deja Vu Films. Um, I had a relationship with them, and but we had never worked together. So they they offered me the role of uh, well, they offered me a few roles, but never really promised me one. Um, it wasn't until I read the script that I asked to play the role that I ended up playing, um, which is Generation, who is the villain in the film, the antagonist. And um, the crazy thing is, I knew asking for that role, I would have less screen time than the roles they initially offered me. But the character just seemed so dynamic that I, I am different from what I was getting and what I do get, that I wanted to take on that challenge. Um, once we once we had the the day one prep of like you know casting and bringing people on, they saw that I knew the script back and forwards because you know I don't play, and they were really impressed by that. Um, then we had our first rehearsal, and there was an actor that was struggling, and you know the the main uh, woman, the the leader of Deja Vu Films, her name is Deborah Cardona. Shout out Deb. Um, she saw the actor was struggling and told me to go outside and work with him. And I was like, okay. And um, I took the actor outside for 10 minutes, came back. I worked with him and he did amazing. He got the part that he was going for. And then she was like, you know what? You need to co-direct this film with me. Like if you could work with him like that and you know the script, then you can do this. So that's how I ended up co-directing. Um, and, you know, along the journey, we just needed people last minute. And I just just so happened to know people that fit the roles. Um, and I would call the people and I'm like, hey, this is perfect for you. Come on in. I would convince Deborah to let them at least, well, not really audition. They The part was kind of theirs once they came in. At that point, after I spoke to them, they just had to be able to know how to read, you know. Um, and, you know, I would just promise them, like, hey, look, I'll work with these people. These are people that I know personally. They'll work hard and they'll do their thing. I ended up having to even write some scenes for them just to get these people in the movie. So I'm very, very hands on with that film. Um, and, yeah, it's out now on, on Tubi and Amazon Prime. So I, I hope he, I hope I convince people to watch it, not only for my work, but for the movie itself. Yes, indeed, for sure. And it's rare to see um, people co-directing a movie, um, but it kind of, every time I think about two directors um, directing a movie, I think about the Coen brothers. They're one of my favorite filmmakers of all time, but um, if, if both directors can coexist on set and get on the same page, um, respect one another, then, then that's the beauty, that's the goal. But um, for this that's film, my, my bad, before we keep going, that's more about trust and respect. Um, Deborah definitely trusted me to um, direct scenes and um, 
and run rehearsals and all that um and respected me enough to do my thing but i also respected her enough to i mean at the end of the day it is her movie but i still respected her vision and her work ethic enough to fall back and say no nah, let's let's let you lead and i'll just add on to what you have but there were times that she's like kevin i'm tired you could you could do this you don't need me here like go do it so it's that's how we did that you know it's, it's more like a, a partnership but she was definitely the leader of the entire film that's great. That's what's up. Um, so were there any inspirations um, to make this movie? Any films whatsoever in the past that more or less, you know, inspire you guys to do this or this was just straight organically? Um, you guys did this. This movie is actually based off a book uh, by the author Eric Gray. Um, he wrote this book and I know Deborah's inspiration was to make a film that wasn't her own story. Um, cause this is, I believe her fourth film, I believe. And the previous three were always her, her stories from either her novels or just her screen plays. And she wanted to say look i can do i can really direct i can really produce and i can really take something that's not mine and make it magic so that no there i don't think there were any films in specific like we were trying to emulate or like that we took from um i know i didn't have any any uh films in mind i just i was just more teaching than anything while directing you know so let's switch gears a little bit. Let's talk a little bit about Mangu Aki, which okay. you're the leading um, actor in the movie. I recently saw the movie on Amazon. And, Thank you. And, um, and I'm one of those people that, you know, I support indie films. So um, you have people that even like for three, four dollars, they're like, I'm not going to watch that because there's no big name or anything like that. But now I support um, anything as long as independent, the story, um, the title. It could be so many different things that could catch my attention. So when I saw um, the poster of this movie, um, I think it was, I forgot. It was on Instagram, but I forgot where I saw it. But I just said, like, hmm, let me check this out. So then um, I, you know, went to Amazon. I saw that it is on Amazon. I rented it and I saw it right away. And I'm not gonna give no spoilers to nobody, but you just gotta see it because um, yeah, that, you know, you just gotta see, I'm not gonna spoil anything, but um, you recently won Best Actor at the New York International Film Awards. So congratulations on that. Thank you. Thank and, you. and I saw a post, I think this was your last post that you said that that was one of your main goals for this year to win Best Actor. So how did it feel to win Best Actor for this particular role? <laughs> um, <clears throat> it was definitely a sense of accomplishment. Um, so every year since, since, so this is my second run at, at acting. Um, I was an actor when I was 15, had a manager the whole thing, took a break, dove back into it. I've, ever since I dove back into it, I've set a specific goal for every year. Um, and I've been fortunate enough to hit that goal, right? Um, like for example, my goal last year was to get a manager, I got one. And my goal this year was to get an award and I did it. Um, how it felt was definitely a sense of accomplishment. I was. I was doing something that I couldn't really celebrate at the specific time that I won. So I kind of had to, like, I was in shock because I didn't even know we were up for an award. So I kind of had to, like, hold it in for a little bit. Um, but, yeah, it was, it felt great, man. And once I won it, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm about to go crazy. Like, I'm, there's a whole much more in in my future, you know, so... Yeah, it just, it just, it felt solidifying. I'll tell you that. Like now I can, now I can, you know, get my shit off. Excuse my French, but like, uh, 
I can no longer say I'm only getting these acting jobs because of my relationships with people or because I just uh, work hard and I apply myself. It's like, no, there's there's a, there's something to solidify that I actually do this shit, you know? I hear you on that. Um, any it's, small it's, kind of, it's kind of like if you're a rapper and all you do is drop mixtapes on Apple Music, but you finally got a record deal, you know? It's like, yeah, <laughs> you know, like, you kind of want to walk around the hood with your contract. You know what I'm saying? Any small wins, you know, builds momentum. So I feel that with this victory, will definitely build more, more momentum for you. I know how that feels. Back in 2018, I remember winning Best Actor at Honor Rolls Film Awards, which is a film festival from Italy. When I won, that gave me so much confidence, so much momentum that, you know, I just kept the push and kept going. So I didn't, I didn't know I didn't know you you won best actor. Yeah, I know I know Honor Rose. I'm I'm applying for them too. Yeah, that was back in 2018. And but that's definitely um a phenomenal film festival. I like the way they communicate mm -hmm. and things like that. Yeah. But um, I won, you know for I won a best ensemble award with them, like at the beginning of the year. Nice, congratulations, congrats. So um is there anything else from a directing or writing standpoint that you have your eyes on in the future? Is there any other, this is probably gonna sound like a two question. So number one, um, what's next for you in terms of directing or writing? And number two, is there any genre that you would like to take on that you haven't done before? Okay, so I have, I have a lot coming up. Um, as we're speaking, literally on my next, the next uh, window on my laptop, I'm uploading my web series to YouTube so I could submit it to festivals. Like it's, it's on YouTube privately so I could submit it to festivals. Um, this is a series, it's called Paper. Uh, I got it initially, I was just an actor, but I was so involved in it that I ended up writing, producing, casting, directing, like it's pretty much my project now. Uh, well, my project as well as my partner, Omar, Omar Moore. Um, so that is coming. I have all types of credits on that. Um, I also created a spinoff web series based off this one where I completely did everything. Completely did everything from acting, writing, financing, producing, location scouting, uh, bringing the production deal. Like I completely did everything. Um, that one is called Paper Eminence. Um, we're, we're almost done with that. Uh, I directed a basketball film called Pickup, which is the first film that I directed that I'm not in. I'm completely behind the camera on that. Um, let me see. Uh, I'm producing Manguaki 2. I'm also starring in it. Uh, we start that in October. Um, what else do I have coming up? I have a, a movie called Game of Chess, which is a romantic comedy that I'm starring in. Uh, I'm only acting in it. I didn't produce or write it. Uh, I have another film that I'm producing, co-directing, and I co-wrote. It's called Big Italy. We should start that probably by the end of the year. Um, I don't think I'll be acting in it but you never know you, you know how it is with filmmaking sometimes you just gotta jump in front of the camera if you, if you can't find anybody but I don't plan on acting in it um I really plan on just taking my time with directing online I'm trying to be on my Scorsese shit you know um let's see what else I could look at my phone because I have so much stuff coming up bro like you know when you work hard you just have so many things that you you don't want to like miss out and lose something um, I literally have a list of projects that I'm working on, so I don't forget. <laughs> um, I have a, another movie called Cameo, which I plan on, well, I wrote like 90% of it. I don't know if I'll co-direct it because I'm starring in it, but I would like to, you know? Um, Oh, well, I have some short films coming up. There's one called Brooklyn Boy. We're going to be at the Mott Haven Film Festival. Um, that's a, a short film that we did in about 14 hours in one day. Shot the whole thing in one day. Um, and the funny thing is that 
we were the reason it took 14 hours because we were on set and we were waiting for the lead character and he tells us two hours after he was supposed to show up that he's not coming so we had to scramble and find somebody to play the lead role and you know i told him like hey look i know i'm preparing for this role but i'm probably the most experienced actor here i can take the lead role if you guys want and we could find somebody to play this that has lesser lines like just off of lines not even off of like me trying to get the spotlight it was just like we need somebody and you know they said no but they found this kid who never acted before did not show up to act he was like driving the truck but he did an amazing job it, it, like an amazing job it's like i think he's a natural he should really pursue acting um oh i have another film called on the road to damascus where this is the first time that I, I like put makeup on myself and I played a drunk devil or a drunk demon in the middle of Times Square and in, in Halloween. And that was like a, a comedic, like a horror comedy almost. Um, and I say all that to say that if, if I was to get a, a role or a genre that I haven't done yet, I definitely want to do a mystery. And I definitely want to do um, a thriller. And I want to do an action movie, too. But by action, I don't mean shoot them up, bang, bang, take the drugs, throw them in the body in the river. Like, I don't mean that. I mean, like, a real, like, like a, a, like a boxing movie or, like, a, a, the Born Identity type of thing, you know? Um, one of those type of films. I, I, like, I want to be able to do a film that forces me to get in shape. If that makes sense, you know. <clears throat> um, obviously you have a lot going on. Um, but man, it's so much better that way to have a list of everything that you're going for because it keeps you hungry, it keeps you focused, it keeps you sharp. So I wish you the best of luck on all of that. Last but not least, where can we follow you and your work? Best way to, to follow me is on my Instagram, Kevin Cosme. Uh B-E-N-C-O-S-M-E. Well, there you have it, folks. I'm going to have all that information here in the description, YouTube. Um, Kevin, thank you so much for taking the time to do this interview on conversations with independent filmmakers. Congratulations on all your success. And I'll be looking forward to your next projects. Thank you. Thank you. How long have you been doing this? Like interviewing people? Interviewing? Man, this ain't about me. This is about you. But... um. <laughs> Um, interviewing, yeah. yeah, when I'm interviewing people, I don't like to take shine, so I like to focus on the interviewer. You gave me but, my um, shine, not you. Remember, I'm a podcaster. Yeah. We'll do this on your podcast then, but um, <laughs> to wrap it up here, but to wrap it up here, I've been interviewing. I mean, first of all, um, I went to school for journalism, not for acting. I got into acting my last semester, but long story short, I've been interviewing for about on YouTube, I should say, as a content creator for about two, three years now, mm. two, three years. Yeah, I'll say that. But in term, now we're gonna go like in terms of journalism overall, I would say 10 years. Wow. Yeah, wow. but in terms of entertainment, I will say two to three years. Nice. Okay, one, one, one more question before we go. Um, I just started podcasting this year. It's, it's something that came to me. I didn't look for it, but I've always wanted to do it. One thing I, I'm trying to build a skill on is my research on people. How do you, like, how did you get the research for this interview and how do you get research for your other interviews? Well, one thing about me, I could say that I'm a very tenacious person. So if I'm looking for somebody to interview, I don't care if I know them or I don't know them. Um, I'll do some research on them, then reach out. Sometimes you might not get a person. Sometimes um, you might, you know, it's 50-50, give or take. So that's how I go about things. But one thing for sure is I'm very heavy when it comes to mutual respect and mutual admiration. So I could easily sense when somebody is not all in and when somebody is all in. So, but um, I have all the confidence. I have tenacity in terms of who I want to reach out what I want to do next, et cetera. So I have about 
two podcasts, I should say, that I'm working on. Nice. And then I have this, like, I think you and I, you and I are similar in terms of that we have, we're like a jack of all trades. We do so many variety of things, but I'm in this for the long haul, you know, I wake up every day starving. So that's how I go about things. But I just, you, you gotta be initiative. That's the best way I can put it. You gotta be mm -hmm. initiative. Um, don't get lazy. Mm -hmm. Um, cause lazy in my opinion is a disease. So I'm always fighting it. I'm always, you know, keeping myself sharp, keeping myself motivated. I find any kind of message to keep me going and to get the job done. Because the worst thing that, that you can feel is that, man, I wish I could have done this um, back um, a year ago. I wish I could have done that. So I'm always trying to live my life with no regrets and, you know, just go for it. I call it the bug. Once you get bit by the bug, you can't stop. And I, I, I only work with people that get bit by the bug. Yeah, and even, and this is another thing because it's important. I'm not one of these people that think, oh, like I need this amount of money to get this started. No, you got to get started right away. It's never going to be beautiful from the beginning. Um, like I said, I have two podcasts. I'm still in the learning process. We're all a work in progress. We're all going to fail at some point, but that's the thing. You got to fail in order to succeed. So I'm still failing every day. We're all a work in progress. All right, cool, cool. Thank you, thank you for having me on, my brother. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. Um, and like I said, best of luck to you, and I'll be looking forward to more of you. For sure, and I'll be reaching out to have you on my podcast. We can do this again.